Welcome to the Health Flow Podcast. I'm your host, Jean Armand, a nurse practitioner sharing health information, healthcare experiences, and guidance to help you navigate the healthcare system. Tune in weekly for conversations, tips, and real life stories with my special guests. We're excited to have you on the journey with us to achieve the best version of a healthier you. Let's flow. Are you thinking about starting your own podcast? If so, Anchor is the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. Number one, Anchor is free. Anchor has all the creation tools that allow you to record your podcast and edit it right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. Anchor is everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Health Flow Podcast. I'm so excited to have my wonderful guest, Miss Yearby. I didn't want to mess up your first name. Tell me your first name. Andiria. Andiria Yerby. Andiria Yerby. So I got the special, special um, opportunity to meet this lady, of course, at work. I'm always meeting people at work. And um, she's going to share her story about Crohn's disease. So I don't know how many people out there has um, even know what Crohn's disease is. As I was doing like my research and freshening up on Crohn's, you know, years ago, it used to be an Eastern and Northern um, European people and um, who mostly, who most commonly got affected by Crohn's. And now they were saying actually in the recent years, it's been African-Americans. So right. she's obviously African American who struggled with Crohn's and just um I just want her to, her to share her story about Crohn's. So thank you all for joining us and we're gonna talk how and when did this come about that you even got diagnosed with Crohn's? Okay. Um it started like in 2017. Mm-hmm. Start me, I'm very attentive to me and my body. Yes, so yes. I noticed that, um, I know this is like TMI, but my bowel change, yes. you know, and me with taking care of kids and coming up old school with my great grandma and, and my grandmother, you know, um, if there's a scent in your bowels, a different scent is a sign of something being wrong. Right. But I started having blood and mucus in 2017, and and I kept going to the hospital, and they kept saying hemorrhoids, IBS, you know, and at that time, I didn't have no insurance, and I found out that um, I had applied for a Grady card like a year previously. But to get the appointment with Grady, of course, you know, it takes months before you can get to those kind of appointments. Right. So probably a year had passed. And then I had a situation December 2018 where I went to the restroom and it was just blood. And so that was scary. And, um... I still really didn't have insurance and I was waiting on the appointment with GI doctors from Grady. Mm -hmm. So I took my own cash money and I went and saw a doctor in um, Midtown, Emory. And that appointment cost me like $500 just for them to tell me they wanted to do me a colonoscopy. And it was going to cost me over $2,000, which I did not have. Right. But, had an appointment with Grady waiting for me, but it was still was months away. But at this point, I was just really scared. Didn't know what was going on. Um, having frequent visits to the hospital within a year, 
uh, joint pains. Uh, my eyes started bothering me, blurry vision to the point I woke up one morning I couldn't see. Um, but then I finally got the appointment with my GI doctor at Grady. And I did like four colonoscopies. They kept saying it looked like colitis. It looked like IVS, just a case of IVS. And they kept giving me um, antibiotics for an infection called C. diff, which I kept getting. I had C. diff five times. Um, I had, sorry, the light went off. Mm -hmm. I had C. diff five times. Um, it's a long journey. It started in 2017. It's just so much because once I bring up one thing, I think of something else, but it's just so much, but I've learned a lot about it. Um, just recently, fresh diagnosed with getting a new doctor um, in June. And July 24th, that's when I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease. Yeah. Um, my colon had been through a lot with the C. diff infection five times. They put me on steroids. At this point, it was not the beginning stages of Crohn's. It was like a point where it was getting worse because I was having flare-ups more frequent. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so they put me on steroids, and now I'm currently taking injections for Crohn's. And I actually, when I left your office today, I had an appointment with my GI doctor, mm -hmm. and um, they want to schedule me a, uh, another colonoscopy to see after the 10 weeks of me doing the injections if it's helping. Okay. But the scenario, the whole moral of this is, you know, just bits and pieces of what I went through is that um, mentally Crohn's can, you know, devastate your mind, just like take you away from here because you think in the words, not knowing what's going on, you keep having to get a colonoscopy. Um, drinking that stuff is horrible. Um, and then the bleeding and not knowing mentally, it affects your eyes, it affects your joints. Like, it's, 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 it's an autoimmune disease, so it, it's open to attack any anything in you. Like, it takes over you, like, and you mentally have to get it. And like I told you, they, a lot of prayer, not understanding, because like I told you, my mom said she didn't know where it came from. Right. After I saw you today, I even tried to read up on it some more, but it's still uh, really, like, unknown where it came from. Yeah. And, and that's the point is that what the, the whole thing with Crohn's, first of all, it's inflammation that can affect your entire digestive system. Right. So from your mouth to your anus and because right. it mimics so many other um, conditions, it's hard to diagnose. That's one right. thing. It's hard to diagnose. So, I mean, you you could start with just abdominal pain. Then, like you said, the severe diarrhea joint pain then when it really gets bad you're having bloody diarrhea and right. it's just very it's not specific so and it it in it mimics infection because i know you were talking about all they would ever do is put me on antibiotics because it right. mimics an infection and you really have to be your advocate like the patient have to um just be persistent I mean, I hate to say it, but you, you have to be persistent to get the help you need to right. get to the bottom of the diagnosis. And educate yourself on it. Yes. Find yes. anything you can on it because if I want to change doctors and if I want to say certain things that I have said to doctors, you know, I probably would still be in a bad situation right now. Yeah. Because like, I start to realize, like, this is too much. One antibiotic they gave me was 550 milligrams. That was for 14 days straight, three times a day. And then 10 days later, they gave me another antibiotic, but that was 200 milligrams, which my insurance would not pay for it and cost $4,000 and my son paid for it. And it still didn't work. And after, in July, week after my birthday, my daughter found me um, sick. I was sick. I couldn't make it. I couldn't make it. I had to go to the hospital. I, my colon was woe out from those antibiotics, that infection, 
and trying to fight it and keep going and not feel well, you know, if, if I wouldn't have educated myself on a lot, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. Mm -hmm. And with prayer, with prayer, um, because, you know, like we talked today, you know, doctors, they go to school for this, you know, and they, they can tell you something, you know, all day. But to me, a higher power. And then, you know, trying to get yourself right and doing everything you got to do for you. Yes. You know, yes. I had to change doctors. That was horrible. Mm -hmm. That was the worst time of my life. Yeah. I cut all my hair off. I had to stop working. You know, I didn't know what was going on. Even after I had a colonoscopy and they did a biopsy, on the ulcer that was in my colon and benign, everything benign, even after that, and I still didn't feel good. I still thought the worst was wrong with me yeah. because the doctor that I had could not get down to the bottom of it, which is stop giving me the antibiotic. Mm -hmm. um, they actually told me 44, this was last year, 44 years old, um, remove half of my colon and put me on a, a, a bag. And I was like, no, I'm 44 years old. I'm not going to do that. Right. You know, when I changed doctors, that, that actually was this year. Mm -hmm. I didn't change doctors because that was, you know, and then to kind of find out, just give me some steroids and let my colon heal. Yeah, because the, all the repeat, I mean, <laughs> antibiotics are good for certain things, but they can cause harm. Right. Use can is what called the C. diff because you destroy the natural flora of your gut. And then that's why you can get that infection. So I can see that happening, but it's like anything else. It's like you have to, if you're not getting the answer that you want or that you're happy with, because sometimes people don't get the answer that they want, but that's because that's just what they want. You right weren't getting to the bottom of it. So you right. just kept on saying, I'm going to keep fighting. I'm going to go to someone else. Right. Someone's going to tell me I'm having these symptoms. I'm sick. I've seen so many patients suffering with Crohn's and it's, it's a disease that we don't know a lot about it. Right. You know, still trial and error because the symptoms are so wide, you know, the severe, the pain, right. The, um, you know, just yeah. the inflammation and right. even reading about it. I mean, it could be stress. Now they're saying people who live in the North versus the South, the Northern people, cold weather have Crohn's more than others. It's just, it's a wide variety. Medicine is, and one of the things I do like about medicine is the fact that a lot of it is still a mystery. A lot of it is still trial and error. And I know people want to just have answers. You know, we have answers, but you got to fight for your answer too. If you're not happy with what, just like a lawyer, if you get a lawyer and you're not happy with that lawyer, he doesn't listen to you, go get a, a physician that will listen to you. Right. Because I, the patient usually has the answer is what right. I say. You just have to listen to them. Because then you go, then you go and do your work according to what they're saying, not right. what you decided in your mind. Right. Because the patient is going to tell you how they're feeling. Exactly. And, and that's what I like about these doctors that I got now. They are very attentive. I had doctors, when I was in the hospital for those eight days, doctors was in that room around the clock with me. Like, yes. CDC, they came in and tested it because that you know how serious C. diff is. Yes. And they were trying to figure out why did I keep getting it? Like, why? Like, is you know, what's really going on inside of her colon? So, exactly. I, I, and I was, and, and that made me feel better about my situation because, and that's why I was saying, when you have a doctor like you and, and nice doctors and attentive, that makes uh, the patient feel 100% better because mentally, you know, going through something, it, I don't care who you are, you, it takes you on a mental road, you know, it, it does. Cause you, 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 you want to, you have your faith, but you still, you know, afraid a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, cause a lot comes along with all this, the medicine, the sicknesses that we don't know about coronavirus out here, you know, yeah. who really did that before? Like not us, you know, 
it's it's so much and you got to be attentive and i and, and that's why i told you today i stay home i don't go nowhere because i know i'm on humera that's another thing this medicine i really don't know too much about humera mm -hmm. but i know i can't find nobody that's sick or any infection right. you know because it'll it, be hard it, for me yeah it lowers your it potentially lowers your immune system so that you are now someone who can catch other things easily other, right all that opportunistic diseases that you could you can get things that wouldn't bother you know someone uh, with strong immune it it's balance it's it's just it's error it's you know it's just a fine-tuning things and getting to the right physician who specializes in that area because when and i tell people this and sometimes they get upset when I'm working in the emergency room, someone will say, they come to the emergency room um, for all these complaints. And I said, well, you know, this is your third time being here with the same complaint. If you go to the ER, they are not gonna be the end all of that chronic complaint. You right. know what I mean? You've got to be your own person. Find a doctor who's gonna investigate this. All the emergency room has to do is rule out an emergency. Right. <laughs> and then send you off. Like, right. and you'll never see the same person. Unlikely you're going to see that same doctor the next time. So then you right. start all over again. And right. you, know, you it, it's, it's hard for the patient, but it's also hard for the, the, you know, providers working in the ER too, because you're not going to go that deep. If you're having a heart attack, if you've broken a bone, if you're having a stroke, yes, you know, if you, you know, that's who you go to. We can treat you immediately, get you stabilized, and send you off to whoever you need to go off to get further care. Right. You have a situation like Crohn's, and people don't hardly know anything about Crohn's. Right. It's Crohn's <laughs> and ulcerative colitis, and they're like very similar. Right. So the only, and it is not a one with Crohn's, there's not one way to diagnose it. It's not easy, do a test and that's it. Right. It's right. Hard. And it right. is like young and old. Right. And because I used to have fluid on my knees and I used to work a lot. And every time I went to the doctor, they told me it was rheumatoid arthritis. But guess what that goes along with? Crohn's. Yes. Uh, uteritis. When I started having a blue blurry vision in my eye, you you I can't say that word for nothing, but it's mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. They start, you know, saying that my cornea and whatever that's affiliated. But guess what? Chrome. Yes. Um, just all of it. And yeah. and that been that been the that been the thing for all of this. It got so many symptoms, it got so many things that look like other stuff. And you're right. You cannot just say, "Okay, we're gonna do this test." And they, they that my stool has been tested so many times. Mm -hmm. I, like I said, I have had five colonoscopies in one year. Mm -hmm. Trying to get it to take that. a lot of testing. Yeah, to get down to the Crohn's because they want to make sure. You know, it went a long road for me with this, but um, it's it's. It's getting to the point, like I told you today, it's getting under wraps where it's being managed. I haven't been sick mm -hmm. since July. And um, I'm on the Humera, but like I said, I'm not trying to have no long term with that. You know, mm -hmm. the Lord is constantly working on me with this. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I, I try to get with the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation because I just want to educate myself mm -hmm. and just... You know, I'm not good at speaking and this, that, and the third, but it's other people going through this. Like I told you today, my friend, he called me, he's suffering with it, and he didn't even have a doctor. Mm -hmm. You know, it's becoming more common. Yeah. Um, and, and, that's, and, 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 and that's weird because you would never think somebody else is going through that. Yeah. Especially somebody that I know. And that that means it's, it's being more frequent, and it and it gotta be what's really behind this Crohn's, like. And see, that's how deep I want to go. I want to know where you know what actually causes Crohn's, cause it's really no answer. Yeah, there's no like, definitive answer. I mean, 
It, we know that genetics have to do it. Like if both your mother and father have it, you're in a higher risk. If you have a first degree relative, which you shared that your aunt had it, there's right. a more higher, then there's environmental factors. A anything that can really increase your inflammation, then there's the food we eat. There's right. processed food versus unprocessed. They're even saying that people in urban areas get it more than people in rural areas. You mm. know, so it's, it's just so many factors. We don't, we just need to bring awareness so people know you're never alone. And you talk about you're not um, a great speaker, but your experience is what makes you great. Right. You know, what you're going through and the fact that today you were like, oh, I want to talk about it. If I can help someone else, I want right. to help them. That's right. what makes it great. Because it's, it's horrible. And mentally, it can take you on uh, another level. Um, you know, we all get weak sometimes. Yeah. And, and I'm going to tell you, I, I, I was weak. I'm, I, I mean, I, like, <laughs> I... I never experienced anything of the sort in my whole entire life. Yeah. Um, I got high blood pressure, but other than that, you know, I, I never had to deal with anything like this. Yeah. And Usually, you know, like when said, we have something like, say, if your stomach hurts, say you have a, I don't know, gastroenteritis or just, right. have, you know, stomach flu. I mean, two, day, two three days later, you're fine. Right. But Crohn's is relentless. Like you're right. suffering with this severe pain, vomiting, right. nausea, diarrhea, and no one can tell you where it's from. So, you know, it's, it's, I, I'm right. so thankful that and you're willing to share. Yes. And I, and I'm thankful that you allow me to share. Absolutely. I'm, I'm really grateful for that because somebody may need to hear about it. Somebody, as little as much as I said, somebody may hear it and like, you know, just pay attention to your body. Mm -hmm. Go get yourself checked. You know, don't just, you know, go to the proper doctors. You know, read up on the stuff yourself. Mm -hmm. Pay attention to your body. That's how you find out a lot of stuff. I know when my body changed. Mm -hmm. I know every bit of when anything. You know, people could go along and have a knot and, and keep going. You know, I don't do that. You know, I'm so okay. glad that you said that. That's the main thing. And especially that's especially with our African American people who, yes, we have a lot of stress in our lives, but they just keep on going and ignoring symptoms and not get proper checkup. This is what the Health Little Podcast is all about, is bringing right. awareness. You being aware that there could be diseases or illnesses out there that may or may not be treatable, but you can get control of it. You know, you can get help right. and you ignore things. And then we find out when it's gone so bad that there's very little anyone can do. No, keep on fighting for your health. Pay attention to your right. body. You know, right. follow up. Hey, Don't just geez. leave it to somebody else to just, oh, I'm just going to, you know, this one day when the pain is out of control, you're going to run up into an emergency right. room. It doesn't work like that. Go to the follow-ups. Have one doctor you trust and you feel like you're being listened to. And if that one's not listening to you, hey, that's the beauty of America. You go find another one. Right. And go get out get Get all the help you can get. Whatever help you can get to try to help yourself, you need to go get it. Because right. I'm telling you, I work, but I, you know, I, I had got a greater car and I got insurance. So I got both. I, I need all of it because that's how bad I, I want to, you know, make sure as far as my health, whatever I got is being managed, but I'm still healthy. I got Crohn's, but I'm healthy though, you know. That's just something that I have right now. And it's it's all good because we, we working it out. And, okay. and it's gonna and it's gonna get better. And it's always gonna get better. Just be attentive to your body. Yes. And don't don't ever fail your body. Just whatever whatever you feel and it don't feel right, do something about it. Cause you don't want it to manifest and create, you know, create a whole big problem.
um, you know, and uh, for family, loved ones, everybody, you know. I agree. So what I'm going to do definitely is make sure that I put um, all the information, you know, general information about Crohn's in my show notes so people could read, but like follow up on these symptoms. If you're having severe, like signs of Crohn's, as we said, severe abdominal pain, you can have joint pain, right. blood diarrhea, um, vomiting, weight loss, all yeah. those things, unexplained, you know? Any, any distinct smell to Mm-hmm. Your urine or 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 your bowels, you know, uh, any different smell because the different smell lets you know too. Just like a baby, when you know when a baby used to get an infection, they you had those big blowout in their pampers, and it had that different smell. It, it's the same thing, you know. Just pay attention to everything, and this might be weird or sound funny, but pay attention to everything. That's how you. That's how you fit. That's how you get. That's how you find out stuff and you take care of things when you pay attention. Changes in your bowel pattern, that is significant. If you're right. somebody who used to go every other day and now you're going every day or you right. go, you know, twice a week and now you're going once a week, you know, right. or even in the size and the appearance, pay attention to your bowels, know your body. Know when right. things are different. Yeah, you are so right. Pay attention to you. Right. <laughs> Be okay. your, your best advocate. Right. Appreciate yes. you, young lady. Thank you so much for taking the time. You. I All appreciate right. you. That's and great. I'll be, and I'll be, um, I think I finished up everything there, but I'll be in that Wednesday. But you got my number, though. I'm always, whatever. You know, I made a new friend today, and I was excited about that, too. Oh, I came oh, home and sweet. talked. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Have a safe procedure and we'll talk. We'll talk. Okay. All right. All Thank right. you. And have a nice night and be safe, okay? You too. God bless. Bye. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you for tuning in to the Health Flow Podcast. It is my sincere desire to provide you with information that will help you make better health decisions. Spread the word by subscribing, sharing, and rating. Until next time, keep your health flowing.